الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا زدنا علما قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما وليكم الله ورسوله والذين آمنوا الذين يقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة وهم راكعون صدق الله العظيم The ayah of the Quran that I have just recited to you it talks about the real and true friend of a believer This is a common problem and it exists in all ages It is not related to kids alone or kids going to high school or, or people in college or people working. It is even a problem in retired people. They have a hard time picking up their friends. They don't truly know who is their friend and how much of the information that they're receiving from these worldly friends. They should really have room for that in their mind and heart and what information to discard. They can't make that judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making things a lot easier for us. And is telling us, إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ Indeed, who is your true friend? Allah and His Messenger. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And those who have believed. Why believing? And being among the believers is such an important thing. Because there is a constant reinforcement. It doesn't say those who are Muslims. No, it says those who are mu'min. Those who are practicing individual. The companionship makes a lot of difference. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same ayah says, الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ These are the people who establish prayers. They don't, they don't read prayers. They establish them. وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ They give all kinds of charities. Mandatory and non-mandatory. وَهُمْ رَاكِعُونَ And these are the people who bow down to Allah in humbleness. Because humbleness is so important. A lot of the time, Depending on what age you are in, there is some arrogance that creeps in an individual. You know, we, I, mean, I was once a teenager too. And when going into the teenage years, transitioning into adulthood, a lot of arrogance creeps in. Sometimes the arrogance takes a totally different fold, where I do not want to accept that I'm wrong. And if that idea goes pretty strong as an adult, as a working individual... As even a retired person, that idea gets very strengthened. And a person is not willing to accept that he or she is wrong. So this is very important for an individual to be humbled. And this is one of the common problems we notice in a lot of the households. Where parents are not willing to accept that they could be wrong. That chapter is not even in the book. Because they think if they accept I'm wrong... I will be humiliated. Things have changed. It's more about teamwork. And family has always been about teamwork. If I start teamwork in the family, I can bring that teamwork in the community. If I do not do teamwork in my family, then I am not doing a true teamwork in the community. So it's all about teamwork, working together, living together, progressing together. If I disagree with somebody or a group of people and I start gathering the people that I think are like-minded as I am and start building institutions in the name of what my thought process is, this whole thing is going to fall apart. And whatever number of people I gather around myself, 
Tomorrow, if their number grows up, there will going to be people in that group that will disagree with me. They will open another masjid. That's not the point of the masjid. It never was the point of the masjid to start building your masjid if you disagree with the person who is currently in the masjid. The idea of the masjid was إِنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ The houses of worship are for Allah. They're not Burmese, they're not Albanians, they're not Pakistanis, they're not Punjabis, Hyderabadis, Indians. No. The masjid is not labeled by any nationality. The masjid is a house of worship and is a house of community building. Look at the masjid of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and the other masajid in the city of Medina that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam built. They had a purpose. It was not like that, okay, since I am from this tribe and that tribe built a masjid, so I will also going to build a masjid in competition. No, it was not like that. There was one tribe who did that. And you know what happened to that masjid? Quran talks about that masjid, Masjid al-Barar. The masjid that was put together in the name of evil. So the Prophet ordered that masjid to be demolished. Because that was house of evil, not house of worship. Because the masjid has to have a foundation. It has to have a foundation of taqwa, piety. Not the foundation of nationalism. Not the foundation of I am superior than you. Or I speak so and so language so I am closer to Quran than you are. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a principle. Some laws to live by. It's not like if I disagree with somebody I'm going to go my way. It's pretty much like people are still fighting over Should I start my Ramadan with moon sighting or with lunar calendar? Well, two schools have been established. So there's no reason to fight anymore. So established. So now if you fight, you're causing fitna. So you pick one and you stick with it. Let others do what they're doing. If somebody wants to pray Isha and go home, that's okay. Tarawih is not mandatory. But we make a fight out of it. Eight, twenty. I have to finish the Qur'an. Where do we get all of these things from? Why can't we as an individual also read Qur'an at home? Why do I not come for Taraweeh after I have read, read the Jews with the meaning that the Imam will recite tonight? So that at least I know what he's reciting or get some idea of it. Rather than standing blindfoldedly all my life and have no clue what was recited to me. It's pretty much like, it reminds me of a guy... Somebody told me he used to work at Maytag. All his job was to put the screws on the back of the refrigerator. That's all he did for 20 years till he retired. How much progression that you have there? A fridge comes in, you put the screws. Next fridge comes in, you put the screws. Otherwise, you're sitting down for the fridge to come on the line. Is that the kind of a believer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be on a supply chain doing one task, no progression? Or there should be some progression in life. And a lot of the people call the masjid and say, can you tell me what time is taraweeh? Ooh, really? How about, how about if I call the masjid and say, what time is Isha? That's important, that's mandatory. Taraweeh is not mandatory. It's extra. It's pretty much like a person who calls his workplace and say, what time do we stop working so I can come for overtime? What are we going to do to that person? The same individuals that fight for Tarawi all over the world I'm talking about. Same individuals that fight for Tarawi, they don't pray five times a day. The same people who are so adamant to finish the Dawra Al-Quran, they will be home and not come to Masjid for Zuhr. These are the same people who would not come to Masjid for Fajr, or Isha, or Maghrib, or other times in the year. But in the Ramadan, from somewhere, they want to do Tarawi. So we got to pick. What are we doing? What kind of things are we going after? And are these the things to fight about? And apart from each other? 
Remember we read every time we read the salah, Maliki Yawmid Deen. There is a meaning behind that ayah. One day you have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what will we going to tell him that day when he tells us, why did you cause the fitna in the community on something that was not even obligatory? You split the community. Why? What were you trying to accomplish? My favor by disrupting my, my people who believed in me? What was going through your head? So we have to be careful. There is an outcome of every action. There's always an outcome for every action. The problem is when we take an action and don't look at the outcome. Every organization runs with a goal. Now you pick up an organization. Pepsi, Coca-Cola, Microsoft, Google. Go to their website. They all have a mission statement. And they live up to that mission statement. Every few years they revise that mission statement. That defines the goals of the organization. The short term goal and the long term goal. These schools around us, they have a mission statement. Each and every school has a mission statement. And it delivers to that mission statement or try to deliver to that mission statement. What is the mission statement of the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? To serve our own interest or to be pious? Achieve piety. Achieve humbleness. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there is Jannatul Firdaus that I have prepared, or that lil who? The pious people, the muttaqeen. Qad aflahal mu'minun. Succeeded. Who? The believers. So, what do, we, what do you have to do to be a believer? Oh, you have to cause humbleness. Khashi'un fi salah. You have to be the giver. You have to be the contributor, not an absorber. Don't be a sponge. Give back. Cause harmony. Don't disrupt. Don't think of yourself that you're higher than anybody. When people will walk into Medina, and they would walk into the presence of the Prophet, when he would be sitting among his companions, and it would be from the Arab, from the Bedouins, they would walk in and say, which one of you is Muhammad? He didn't have long robes to differentiate him from the other people or big turbans, a lot of people surrounding him, sitting higher. Where did we get all these things from? Why do we have to be made feel that you are important and special so that we can serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where did this thing? This is certainly from nafs, not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to, this Ramadan, this is the Ramadan. That's the whole point of Ramadan. This is the boot camp for us to rethink what was I doing and what am I supposed to do. Now a lot of the people, I tell this many times, give some stupidest reasons to disbelievers, non-believers, when they ask them, why do you Ramadan fast? They said so that I can feel for the people who are hungry. If that disbeliever is a little bit learned, We'll say, are you kidding? When the Islam came in Medina, the people of Medina were some of the poorest people in Medina. Who were they feeling for? So what is the idea of fasting? Self-discipline. They understand, these non-believers, they understand that we're disciplined. So don't make up answers out of the blue. Don't make a fool out of yourself. Say, this is my way of disciplining myself in accordance with the principles laid down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why I fast. I go through this boot camp process so I can live my life the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to live it. I want to guard my tongue. I want to guard my actions. I want to pray to Him humbly. I want to serve Him the way it should be served like a servant. I want to live a life of a servant so I can take that Spirit and live the rest of the year in that spirit. That's why I fast. Yes, there are byproducts for some people who are so rich that they eat all the time that they can feel for the people who don't get to eat. But that's not the sole purpose. This is the same example as somebody calls a masjid and says, What time is tarawih? 
and shows up for Taraweeh but doesn't come and pray Isha. Has so much emphasis on byproducts. So if you come for Isha, you will find Taraweeh. That's the bottom line. Because Isha is always before the Taraweeh. That's it. So we have to change the way we approach life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala picked this month up for us, Shahr Ramadan. A month by name, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, differentiates it from the other 11 months and says, Why? Shahr Ramadan, الذي أنزل فيه القرآن. This is the month I chose to reveal the Quran to you. What is Quran? What is the Mus'haf? It is the book of guidance. Hudallil muttaqeen. It is the guidance for the pious people. It is the guidance that you have asked for when you fold your hands and say, Ihdina sirat al mustaqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please guide me. Here's the guidance. Hudallil muttaqeen. Now get it and pick it up. It is not solely the job of an imam to read the Quran. It is each and every individual's job to read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ponder over it. Think about it. Now if you run into something that you can't understand, now go to the people who can explain it to you. But if you solely don't read it, what's going to happen? Anybody can tell you anything and get away with it. And there are people who do that. They misquote the Quran. They pick verses from the Quran left and right. And they misguide the people. Out of context verses. Words out of context. That's why I read this ayah to you in the beginning. إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ Your friend, your true friend, you're seeking for friendship. The friendship so that you be guided and be aligned. Allah and His Prophet and وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And those who have believed. And what kind of believer are they? الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ They establish the prayers. وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاهَ They give. They give. Mandatory and non-mandatory. وَهُمْ رَاكِعُونَ And they're humble. They're humble to their Lord. This humbleness of bowing down is very important. You'll find it in all religions. Because this bowing down basically makes you realize if you think that I am giving away the most highest piece in my body, I'm bowing, bowing it down in, some, some in front of somebody that he is higher than me. If you feel that. And how do we start our salah? Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. And our lives, how do we live it? Allahu Akbar. We go in ruku'ah. And then we, when we come out of the ruku'ah, Samia Allahu liman hamida. How many of us understand what that means? If you just understand the salah, what it means, and live with it, that will going to change a lot of things. That will change drastically. Just try doing it once. Once. And feel how you feel coming out of the salah. You probably will not look forward to saying assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You would rather want to pray longer. Because now you have felt it. I am in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a humble servant folded down it is just me and my Lord. Subhanallah. Just me and Him. That's it. He has His full attention on me. Am I giving my full attention? When I say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, do I really, really mean it? Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Malik, Yawmiddin. Iya kan abudu wa iya kan astain. I'm living it. If you believe it, you're going to have a totally different effect on you. And that's what the spirit of the salah is, to get connected. And now think about Ramadan. Oh, you are in constant boot camp. That's the, boot of, that's, that's the spirit of Ramadan. It's not hunger. We worry too much about the stomach. 
If you ask a lot of the people, they say, Oh, I gained my weight in Ramadan. Why? Because you were eating all the oily stuff. So to you, when it was time to break the fast, you wanted greasy food. Which is totally disastrous for a stomach that has starved all day long and has built so much acid in it and you are putting in grease in it. What nonsense is that? Really, are you fasting or what? In the morning, you want to eat the parathas, big oily ones. Because you think we're not camels. We can store stuff in our hump and survive on that. We can't. So we have to think positively. If I work out, I have to figure out my workout schedule. How will I going to work out? I shouldn't work out when I'm fasting. That's bad. But when should I work out? How much to work out? How much intakes of liquid should I take to maintain them healthy? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful. He says if you are in a situation where they are so young, you have not reached the age of puberty, it is not mandatory for you to fast. If you fast, it's okay. And if you have reached an old age where you can't fast, then don't fast, rather feed a poor person. If you are sick, but you can recover from it, make up the same number of days that you have missed in the remaining year. If you're traveling and you can't fast, okay, make up the same number of days in the remaining year. Allah yuridu bikum. What does Allah want from you? Easiness. Yusuf. Wala yuridu bikum al That's why he says, فَقْرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ Read from the Qur'an, whatever you can, but at least read. That's why the first message given to this ummah was what? اِقْرَأْ Read. بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الَّذِي خَلَقْ خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ عَلَقْرَ اِقْرَأْ وَرَبُّكَ الْأَكْرَمُ الَّذِي عَلَّمَا بِالْقَلَمِ عَلَّمَ الْإِنسَانَ مَا لَمْ يَعْلَمْ it's basically, this tells us, if you just read these five ayahs, that will humble you. That will tell you what is your origin. And despite all your intelligence, you're nothing. Because everything comes from Him. You think without Him, I could memorize the Quran? You think without Him, His mercy, I could memorize Bukhari and Muslim and Tirmizi and Abi Dawood? No. I am Mr. Nobody. Nobody is Mr. Anything or Miss Anything. It is by His will that we do what we do. So it's a month to ponder, think that how can I connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and take out any negativity that we have from our minds and our hearts and mend it. Build a community. Don't, don't destroy the community. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم